Welcome guys to another episode of the podcast and the main topic today is 2021 and the concept cars coming for that season. And welcome guys to today's podcast and again I'm here with Nib Blow and Nib how are you doing mate? I'm doing very well. All good now let's go into this podcast and the main theme I would say is the 2021 concept cars. And as you can see on the screen now, some very interesting concepts that uh, Liberty Media have brought about now. My opinion in terms of how they look, I like how the the rear and the side pod bodywork looks. I think it looks nice, but I am not the biggest fan of the front wings. I don't think they look that great, really. But if it produces, you know, great racing and removes the dirty air then I don't care how the front wings look. I don't care if the front wings look like they did in 2014. As long as we get close competitive racing, then it doesn't really matter. But Nib, from what you've seen so far, what do you think of this 2021 concept? Do you think this is a good step towards the future? Or do you think there is something that maybe Liberty are missing? It's a very good step towards the future, but I must say, I definitely don't want to see any 2014 front wings. That's that's a no. I've moved moved past like the look of the halo and everything, but not those are uh, awful front wings. I think these front front wings look quite good actually. They're all right, you know. They're not the beautiful ones that we've got now, but they they are fine, and we'll just get used to them. But for me, concept three is absolutely amazing that is my favorite by far just the whole look of it the halo looks immaculate the rear wing looks great it looks so aggressive and that's what formula one needs i must also point out that these sketches were done last year that's why they do have the old f1 logo on it and not the new one but then I absolutely love also how they've drawn inspiration from previous cars on Concept 2 of the 70s Ferrari rear wings. That's great. So what are your thoughts on the Concept cars? Yeah, I do agree with what you think about Concept 3. It does look probably the best out of the three. And, you know, I'm still not a fan of the front wings, but... The third one definitely is the best out of the three. And if that is what F1 looks like with the cars in 2021, then I would be very happy with that. I really would because F1, I think as you just said, F1 with its cars does need to have that aggressive, mean you know, look to its cars. And if it does have that, then I think we will attract new fans to the sport, especially if these new cars, you know, look so great and also provide great racing, which is what we need at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And Paddy Lowe came out yesterday and said that these 2021 cars have the similar aerodynamic dirty air, I don't know whatever to call it, but the same effect that the 2009 cars had. So if we're going back towards that, that's certainly a good step in the right direction. Also for 2021, it looks like we're going towards 18-inch tyres. And Nib, what do you think about that? Do you think that will help the racing or not? I'm not too sure whether or not it will help the racing, but I'm not a huge fan of them. But at the end of the day, I'll get used to them. So there's not too much of a point discussing them. And on Concept 3, especially the rims of those tyres look beautiful. So I'm actually... I'm actually not too opposed against them. Another thing I want to point out as well, I think, Nib, you made this point, is the halo and the look of it. It does look way better than the current version of the halo. And I think that pretty much confirms that Liberty already had a plan of how they wanted the halo to look in three or four years' time. And they knew that the first version, the current version of the halo, was not going to look good. So... It's good to see that Liberty, already when it comes to the looks of these cars, are looking forward immediately and are already looking to improve on this because the Halo, it doesn't look too bad. It's not awful, but it definitely can be improved upon, as we have seen 
with these 2021 concepts. So very good to see that Liberty are going to try and improve this because it can be improved for absolute sure. We're going to move on though from the 2021 concept cars and go on to some other news this week and that is that F1 is now going to be opening up to in-race betting I believe from 2019 onwards or 2020 I'm not quite sure but they are going to be opening up to in-race betting now. Despite the fears of maybe in-race fixing I don't think this is the biggest issue. I understand why some people think this is a massive problem. I totally get why, but I don't have a massive problem with this. Um, this is basically Liberty's idea of trying to connect more to the F1 fans. That's basically what they are trying to do. Nib, what do you think about this? Do you, do you have any problems with this or do you not really care that much? Not really. We've seen over the last few years in other sports like cricket and tennis that the sort of corruption the sort of spot fixing has has gone away so i don't think that there's any major concerns about this it's a good deal for liberty they've got a hundred million dollars up front so that's always good for them you know getting more money is is never a bad thing so it's a positive move for the sport and certainly certainly for liberty and hopefully with that money, they use it in the right places. Now we're going to go on to some news about possibly the return of Istanbul, the Turkish Grand Prix. And this news comes from the president of Turkey saying that they are negotiating or have negotiated with Liberty Media possibly about returning the Turkish Grand Prix to the F1 calendar now. I would love for this race to come back to the calendar. I think it would be fantastic. Nib. What do you think about Turkey returning to the calendar? Do you think it would be a success? Or do you think that maybe it wouldn't be the biggest success in the world? Well, I must say I absolutely love the track of Turkey. It's an absolutely beautiful track, especially Turn, turn 9. That's, that's such a mega complex. Obviously, Kota have copied that a little bit. But it, that's, that's the original if people aren't too sure about that the biggest concern about this is the amount of fans showing up to the races because that's the main reason that it was taken off the calendar it wasn't making enough money so as long as president erdogan can get enough fans to the race then i think this will be a positive for both sides of the negotiation table not only for me is that my biggest concern is fans showing up kind of like for the korean grand prix you know that track was fantastic but Again, like the Turkish Grand Prix, no one really, you know, showed up for that race. So that is a concern. But my concern also is if the front wing aero is still poor in terms of following another car, Turkey is, let's say, not the greatest track in the world for, um, say, following another car if you do have bad, you know, dirty air on the cars. Again, turn nine in that corner with... The current dirty air we have on the 2018 cars, it's going to be very bad. So hopefully in 2019, it gets cleaned up and then cleaned up even more for 2021. Because then I think we would get some great Turkish Grand Prix if it did come back to the calendar. But if it came back for next year and the front wing aero was not that much cleaner in terms of the dirty air, I think, yes... You know, we, we love this track, but the races would be quite poor because Turkey, again, is not the greatest track to follow another car. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. The whole first sector is sort of, you can only take one line through it, and then obviously up until the back straight, that's the only time where there wouldn't, the cars wouldn't be affected by dirty air. So that certainly is a bit of a concern. And finally, guys, let's go on to basically our early predictions for the Russian Grand Prix in a week's time now. If I had to predict right now what the podium is going to be, I would probably go Lewis Hamilton to win, Vettel to finish in second, and Bottas to finish in third. The reason I'm going Hamilton to win is because I think just him and Mercedes are on a roll right now, and Vettel and Ferrari just aren't. The momentum is clearly with Lewis Hamilton, so I think he will win the race. Vettel, 
I wouldn't be surprised if Vettel got on pole, but I don't think he'll win the race because him and Ferrari just cannot deliver when it comes to race day. And Bottas, I think, will be third and very competitive. And I would not be surprised if he finished second or maybe even won the race because, as we know, Russia is a very, very good track for Valtteri Bottas. Of course, he won here last year. That was his first win in F1. He's had a couple podiums in Russia. So I would not be shocked if Valtteri Bottas ended up having a good race nib. Do you think Lewis Hamilton will take his, I, I think it's his fifth victory in six races if he wins in Russia. Do you think he will or do you think Sebastian Vettel finally is going to respond? I firmly believe that taking his 70th win in Formula 1 will be Lewis Hamilton. He's just in such a rich vein of form at the moment. I don't see anyone stopping him. Second place, I'm going to go Valtteri Bottas, simply because he is so good around here. And I would like to put Kimi in third, because I think Kimi is very good around Russia and should have had pole last year if he didn't bottle the final corner. But I'm going to go for Sebastian Vettel in third, because if Kimi was in third and Seb was in fourth, Ferrari should at least um, swap positions just for the title, just in case, because who knows what can happen. But Red, don't expect Red Bull to be anywhere near the front of the grid this weekend because the engine deficit is so much and Verstappen's going to have to cop a grid penalty from his because of his engine issues in Singapore. So I'd expect Ricardo to be in fifth. So, yeah, that's that's really it. It's, I think it will be very close this weekend between Mercedes and Ferrari. We're not too sure who is going to have the edge here in terms of who's going to have the best car. But because Hamilton is just unstoppable at the moment, in my opinion, I think he will get pole. Right, so guys, that is it for this podcast. Sorry that it was not very long, but to be honest... It's not been a great news week. There's not been that much news this week. But tomorrow, I am going live tomorrow at 12.30pm UK time for a live news show. So I am saving a couple bits of news for that live stream. So don't forget to tune into that. But yeah, not that much news this week. And again, as ever, thanks to Niplo for joining me on this podcast. Thanks, mate. It's a pleasure as always. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. As well, guys, don't forget to join the Discord server. There's a link below down in the description also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think about the topics we discussed. Please comment down below what you think about those topics. And until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.